My name is Scott Small. I'm a uh, professor of neurology at Columbia University. I'm Scott Schobel, Associate Research Scientist in the Department of Psychiatry. I'm Holly Moore. Uh, I'm an Associate Professor of Clinical Neuroscience in the Department of Psychiatry at Columbia and at the New York State Psychiatric Institute. Uh, and my lab has had a long interest in understanding uh, how diseases affect the hippocampal formation, a structure in the brain. Uh, now in schizophrenia, uh, a number of previous studies have uh, shown that the hippocampus is characterized by two abnormalities. The first is abnormal hypermetabolism, uh, and the second is atrophy or shrinkage. And so uh, what has been unknown is whether these two abnormalities are linked, and if so, by what common mechanism. Uh, and so uh, we have recently published a paper uh, in uh, Neuron where we use a combination of technologies to address these questions. The primary technology is MRI-based, uh, and we use two forms of MRI. The first is a variant of fMRI uh, that uses cerebral blood volume, or CBV, to map patterns of metabolism in the hippocampus. Uh, and we apply this to both humans and mice. Uh, and the second technique is structural MRI to map atrophy or shrinkage in both humans and mice. What we found uh, at time one uh, comparing uh, prodromal subjects who subsequently progressed to psychosis versus those who did not is that the subjects who would subsequently progress over two and a half years time um, had focal hypermetabolism in a select hippocampal subregion, the CA1 subfield of the hippocampus. Uh, this was found in the absence of structural changes. There was no atrophy of the hippocampus at that period of time. Uh, but then when followed over time and imaged at time two and we were able to capture 80% um, of our subjects in the longitudinal cohort, what we then saw was an anatomical, uh, functional, and structural spread of abnormalities so that then the neighboring subregion of the hippocampus beyond the CA1, uh, this is the subiculum subregion, also became hypermetabolic under basal conditions. And these two linked abnormalities, CA1 and subiculum hypermetabolism, were then associated with atrophy in the same anatomical loci. So the clinical studies had shown that hypermetabolism precedes atrophy when someone's going through their first episode of psychosis. We wanted to model a condition in the mouse by which we could try to identify the mechanism that might drive these two things. Um, we had some information previously that the drug ketamine might be a good tool to create this model. First of all, ketamine is known, well known, to cause psychosis in humans. It's also been known for some time that it can also increase glutamate in some areas of cortex. It wasn't known what ketamine would do to the hippocampus. So we used ketamine in the mouse and we asked, will it increase glutamate in the hippocampus and can that in turn drive hypermetabolism? When we gave this drug to rodents acutely, we um, saw that uh, the hippocampal evoked hypermetabolism occurred in the exact same subregions as we found in the patient study, that is again the CA1 and subiculum. Uh, so this was a mirrored uh, pattern uh, which we then uh, uh, wanted to understand what was the underlying mechanism or neurochemical driver of this abnormality. So to really test the hypothesis that extracellular glutamate is really mediating all these effects, we needed to really be able to measure glutamate directly uh, and that's why we turned to another series of experiments uh, using a glutamate biosensor. What the mouse model showed us was that there's clearly a link between an excess of extracellular glutamate and hypermetabolism in the hippocampus, particularly in CA1 and subiculum, which were the areas that were most affected in schizophrenia. We found that repeated events that feature an excess of glutamate and the simultaneous increase in hypermetabolism, one being driven by the other, that if that happens repeatedly, that that can in turn lead to atrophy of the hippocampus, something else we saw happening across the first episode of schizophrenia. So the mouse model showed that the glutamate was linked to hypermetabolism. Um, it showed also that if you prevented excess glutamate during the time that we were giving ketamine across that month, that you could prevent atrophy. Taken together, uh, these studies suggest that in schizophrenia and related psychotic disorders, hypermetabolism occurs before atrophy, uh, that they're mechanistically linked, and the studies suggest that the common mechanism is increases in extracellular glutamate.
we hope that this would inspire our colleagues in the field. Um, these strategies have been tried at later stages of psychotic disorder, maybe subjects who've already had dis disorder for 20 to 25 years, but that may be in fact not the best time to apply these treatments. It may be better to apply to subjects who still have a relatively preserved hippocampal structure, and, but nonetheless have this metabolic abnormality. That would be the time that we hope that we, these therapies could be applied and then hopefully make a difference for patients and their families.